In this video, I'm making Firestorm Damascus. Making a pattern like this takes me around two days. At the end of the video, I'm gonna be sending this billet to Nate from the internet so he can make an epic knife out of it. This will be an awesome collaboration build. So sit back and enjoy the journey. To begin with, the first thing we need to do is cut up some 1084 and 15 and 20 steels for our Firestorm pattern Damascus. The 1084 steel is the one that'll be black in the finished knife and the 15 and 20 has a little bit of nickel in it, so when you etch it, it stays nice and bright, and that gives us the contrast between dark and light. The steel I'm using has a pickled finish and a little bit of rust on it. It's probably not necessary, but I go ahead and grind that pickled finish and rust off just so we get really nice, clean forge welds. With the steel ground clean, it's time to stack it up. I alternate the layers between the 1084 and the 15 and 20. I want perfect clean forge welds with this billet. In order to achieve that, we need to seal up all the layers, so I TIG weld all the way around every single layer in the billet. What that does is keeps air from getting inside the billet. When the billet is hot and it's exposed to air, it'll create scale. But since it's all sealed off, no scale will form inside and we'll get beautiful clean forge welds. The steel I'm working with melts at about 2500 degrees. I heat the billet up until it's almost melting, but we don't want it to quite melt, otherwise it'll end up being a little puddle at the bottom of the forge. So I heat it up to 2200 degrees and then we begin forge welding the billet together and drawing it out. One of my favorite parts of knife making is making the Damascus steel. Watching it squish and the scale fall out and the piece get longer and the layers developing in the billet. It's all so exciting. I use a set of squaring dies to re-square the billet. What we're doing is trying to create W's in this billet. You can think of W's as being kind of like distorted layers. Instead of having nice straight layers, we're gonna have these crushed layers that are really curvy and have these sharp points. After making these crushed W's, when we multiply the layers in the billet by cutting it up and restacking it, we'll have all these really sharp little points. And that'll be what makes our really cool firestorm pattern later on. After drawing the billet out into a nice long bar, I grind all the scale off and cut it up into small pieces so we can stack them back up and multiply the layers. Whoa, no way. I'm gonna cut our billet up into four pieces, clean them up with the grinder a little bit, restack them, re-tig weld them, put a handle back on, forge weld it together, and draw it back out again. That's gonna take the number of layers we have now and multiply it times four.
Let's take a look. Should have four W layers. Oh, that looks good. Those W layers are real crispy. I think it'll take about five heats to get the bar twisted. This janky old thing is not grabbing onto it at all. This isn't gonna work. I weld a square bar of steel onto our twist billet. This will give me something that's cold outside of the forge that I can grab onto better with my twisting wrench. Uh, it's a little hot maybe. <laughs> Insert nervous laughter. The bar of steel I welded onto our billet is working great. I can grab it easily with my twisting wrench and begin twisting this billet up nice and tight. I like to twist the billet until it's so tight that it's about ready to shear off because of how many times I've twisted it. You want to stop just before anything shears off though, otherwise you'll ruin your billet. We're almost there. I'm loving how this is looking between here and here, nice and even. I'm going to heat up this end and twist it a little bit more to try to get it even, and then we'll have to heat up this other end and try to get it to twist up a little more so it all looks even down the entire bar. Got the bar nice and even between here and here. Now we need to forge it back out into a flat bar that a knife can be made out of. Got the billet all forged out. It's the proper size. I left it a little extra thick because with this pattern, the deeper you grind into the steel, the prettier the pattern should get. To reset the grain structure of the steel and get it nice and normalized, I'm gonna use the electrically controlled kiln. Heat it up to 1600 degrees, take it out, let it air cool, heat it back up to 1500 degrees, take it out, let it air cool, heat it up to 1400 degrees, take it out and let it air cool to room temperature and the steel will be ready to move forward. I ground the scale off and flattened one side of the billet a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is surface grind the entire billet on my 1958 Coville surface grinder. 
It's got a really cool electromagnetic chuck. We can pop it down on there. It'll hold it in place while we go across it with the stone wheel and grind this down to thickness. We'll go around a little bit, make sure it's sitting pretty flat, and then I can turn the magnet on and it holds it in place very firmly. I can't even move it at all. I just surface ground on this side enough to get it flat. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off the surface grinder magnet now, flip it over and get the other side flattened out as well. Once that's done, we can measure how thick it is and figure out how much we want to thin the billet down. Since this is a twist pattern, I wanna take equal amounts off of both sides of the Damascus billet. Otherwise, the pattern would actually look different on one side or the other if we don't take equal amounts off each side. Before we surface grind on the billet anymore, I wanna find out where the bad ends are that I need to cut off. So I went ahead and cleaned up one side of the billet just with a little 320 grit belt on the belt sander and I'm gonna etch it real quick so we can see the pattern. And that way I'll know where I need to cut it off at. Pull it out and take a little look. Whoa. Oh, that is looking so cool. Now that I can see the pattern, here's what we're gonna cut off and get rid of this icky end stuff. Just so we can see the pattern on the Damascus, I'm gonna mix up a little coffee darkening batch. This will kind of lightly etch the pattern and it should turn the 1084 in the steel really nice and dark. So I've got some water right here boiling and this is just a drywall pan because it's nice and long and I can put my billet in there. We're gonna use some Nescafe Bold or Dark Roast coffee. Whoa. Yeah. Definitely wanna turn the water down, don't want it actively boiling. And we wanna let this cool until it's, I don't know, maybe around 100 degrees or so. I don't wanna put my knife in there while it's super hot. Definitely wanna let it cool a little bit first. I dressed the surface grinder wheel so it would leave a nice finish on the piece. Cleaned it off really well. Let's stick it in our coffee that's had about an hour or two to cool down. The coffee's pretty much room temperature. I've got a couple little wires here that we can kind of suspend the piece on. Go ahead and put it in here. That feels good. I'm gonna let this sit in there overnight and when it's done, should be able to see the pattern really clearly. It's the next day. Let's take this Damascus out and have a look. Whoa. Oh man. I had a lot of fun making this billet of Firestorm Damascus. I can't wait to see how the pattern looks after it's been ground into an actual blade because I think it's just gonna keep getting prettier and prettier. If you haven't heard yet, I make online courses teaching you how to make better knives. Check it out today and save $394 on our advanced course and $200 on our beginner course. Link is in the description. I will see you in the next video. May the fours be with you. Bye-bye. We gave this billet to Nate, so if you want to see him turn it into a knife, then check out this video.